Um, I don't know if you're about to go ahead and get started. All right. I hope you're ready to have a good weekend and a good Sunday. Real quick, quick announcement. We, uh, we are doing our um, fish plates. And whatnot. Um, so go ahead and put in your pre order. We're doing that. It's Friday, and also Sunday, we are having our youth explosion. Um, so the, the kiddos will be uh, painting. They're going to have the easel and the painting and all that stuff. So hallelujah on that. Now, we're about to go and get started. Now, uh, over the past, I want to say about two months, well, really, uh, over the past year or so, I have been. Uh, talking about overall how to be a healthy church member, and I've been highlighting different aspects of being a healthy church member. Now, uh, we've talked about all kinds of things, and I encourage everybody, whether you're on Facebook, on YouTube, please go to my YouTube channel and watch all the Bible studies. Like, this thing about the Word, in all honesty, in our human capacity, I can sit before you for two hours, hour and a half, whatever, and technically, I mean, people only retain maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It's just being honest, right? Now, my Bible says that 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 Paul, he taught all night, no boy uh, went to sleep, fell out the window, died, he said, get up, you went back to teaching. That's your night. That's the boy passed out. Boom, hit the ground. He dead. Paul just, Paul just said, hold on, he was teaching Bible study, hold on, get up in Jesus. And the boy got up, he went back to teaching. See, we got to flow like that spiritually and bring that spirit, that supernatural to the natural. Most people are saying, you crazy for going back to teach Bible study, the little boy died. No, he ain't here alive. He's right there. Give him some meat, give him, give him some coffee or something. <laughs> so you go from I remember Paul did this time, the boy don't sit next to the window. He got in the look, comes next to your mom, get away from the window. And, and, and then he just went on to teach it. So how can a man of God be so confident to teach God's word and be joyous to demonstrate? See, there's a, there's a lot of people they teach God's word, but then you don't see no power demonstration of it. You're just hearing the word, but you ain't seeing it, though. Oh, I'm talking to the leader. See, you telling people one thing, but living a whole different life at the house. I mean, you're telling, okay, I'm the sheep, because we all sheep. Let me make that clear. But I mean, just because I am a pastor, I'm telling you to do something. Well, I don't do that. don't make no sense. Y'all get it later. Jesus is not going to have you do something that he ain't doing. Amen. So that goes into what we're going to talk about tonight. See, a lot of us in the church body, we want everybody else to pray, but you don't want to pray. I mean, you make no sense. That makes absolutely no sense. Now, how are you going to be a Christian with no prayer life and your Lord and Savior prays? I want you to show it to me. I mean, he told me one of his names is the intercessor. He intercedes, right? No one is that he's an advocate. So that means he's doing stuff on our behalf. I mean, my, my Bible also said, what did he say? What did he tell Peter? I'm praying for your faith. I'm praying for you. So how are you going to sit there and you ain't praying? That don't make no sense. So to be a healthy church member, you must. Listen, you don't need a title to become a prayer warrior. So do I need to call you a prophet for you to pray? No. Do I need to call you an apostle for you to pray? No. Because the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist is for the who? For the body. Prayer is for you in the ministry. You can have that relationship with Christ. How are you going to follow something that you don't even talk to? Lord, Father, we bow in humbly before you. 
Thanking you, Jesus. Thanking you for your word. Thanking you for your spirit, that your spirit reveals your word to us. Now, Lord, equip us to demonstrate the power of your word. But, Lord, equip us to let it be our lifestyle, not just talkers. We're, we're doers. Now, now, Lord, your word does not come back void. It does not come back empty. There's nothing impossible for you to do. So, Lord, teach us to operate in the impossible. Because, Lord, we, 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 we walk around and we come in agreement with doubt and, and disbelief. Lord, remove all that out of us because, Lord, your word is a hammer and it breaks the stony heart into pieces. So, Lord, let your word pierce us with conviction, pierce us to activate us, pierce us to ignite us to walk according to your will. Now, Lord, we love you. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So, we about to go in tonight. We're still on being a healthy church member because every word of the Bible makes you a healthy church member. Every damn word. Now, th this is the thing. We all got to look in the mirror and see our dysfunctions and see where we're lacking, right? There's always room for what? Improvement. This ain't the NBA. This ain't the NFL. This ain't none of that. Right? When it comes to the word, first of all, you can't do nothing without the word. Okay, y'all get it. See, a lot of people are caught up in their gifts. See, people get, oh, no, we're going to let, let sister such and such pray. Ooh, she know how to shout the heavens down. So do you. Why well, got to be on sister such and such? Shout the heavens down. You can shout the heavens down, too. Because it's your own personal relationship. Right? How that look, I go into your house calling your daddy, my daddy. Do that make sense? No. So I go to my next door name, daddy. daddy. And he's going to look at me like, bro, if I go, he, he might. I'm black now. I'm saying, daddy. daddy. Uh oh, I'm, I'm the messy household. Of her. His wife going to be looking at him. What you mean? Daddy? He knows something. See, that nigga look right in the natural. But spiritually, that's what we be doing. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Your daddy too. So why why you keep knocking on my door to reach somebody that's also your daddy? That don't even make no sense. Come my daddy. Do, do that make sense? So I'm telling you to call my daddy, and you don't even know my daddy. In the natural, that don't make no sense. But in the, in the church body, what we're doing, we're calling on others to reach somebody that we should know. Prayer warning. We're going to deal with it today. Let's go to Luke 11 and 1. See, look, uh, th this, is, this is what we got to realize. None of us are above uh, uh, learning more and more from the Lord. I don't care if you've been with the Lord for a thousand years and I've only been with him for a day, right? Okay, now, now naturally, me walking with him a thousand years, I got, you know, I got a little bit more in me than you do, right? But the day I walk around saying, I know enough, you don't need to do that. I've heard that already. You better pray for me. I need to repent. I need to repent, right? Nobody's above the basics. Because in essence, I can take Luke 11 and 1, in essence, under the ocean of the Holy Ghost, and give a new message each Sunday. Because it's a living thing. It grows. Right? So the Lord will give me something to talk about using the same verse because I'm dealing with something that grows. But the problem is, we're saying that we're growing, but you're seeing the same things. I'm confused. Say you're growing in Christ, and, and but the same things keep happening to you. I'm confused. Uh oh, oh, some of y'all saying, Pastor, you being me, hear me, hear me. I'm just gonna speak on my family because we're transparent here at the man. There are things that me, my wife, and our family have experienced that may have looked like the same thing, but we got something new out of the situation. You'll get it. You'll get it. I'm stepping on toes. Some of y'all, and I'm not, I ain't trying to be mean, but we're we going to keep it on it. 
Some of y'all may have, have faced more than one repossession, eviction, foreclosure, right? And be real now, it happens. But the thing is, what was your reaction to it when it happened to you? Hmm. Was, it, was, it, was it because I was being stubborn and the Lord was trying to enlarge my territory so he had to call up some ruckus to get me a lot of them? And, and was he looking for my response to change? So now, instead of me crying coming out of the situation, I'm celebrating. Come on, y'all. See, the look of the crips. Y'all, y'all, come on. What I love about the Lord, he loves to make things look different. So you can see a side of him you've never seen. So how can my prayer life change if things don't get difficult? I just keep saying the same prayer. If everything all <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for the turkey. Huh? Thank you, I got 10 mil in the bank. Hallelujah. Everything all good. Kids acting right. Huh? It, it's fun. If they act like that for 10 years, act that check. But let some of the kids go to acting up. Huh. Ooh, let the money start getting low. Huh. Well, hold on. They didn't, they didn't took a whip or two. Well, I got to see you. See, it's a whole different ball game. So 11 and 1. Kill me. There you go. That's my boy there. 11 and 1. It is happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, pay attention. After he finished, oh, oh, wait, stop right there. It happened that while Jesus was praying in a certain place. So it leads me to believe he was making an attempt. Oh, it leads me to believe this is Jesus and he prayed. See, what makes you think you ain't got to pray? Well, now, if the, if, if the man is not here praying, why you ain't praying? It's something that while Jesus was praying in a certain place, after he finished, pay attention, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Who asking you? Who asking you after you pray? See, if he just be sister, such and such, See, out in the clouds now. Somebody should be inquiring. I, I want to I pray for her. I want to pray like him. Yeah, I want to pray. Well, I, I can give you the silver answer. Get, get, get that word in your life. Listen to me. If you want your prayer life to change, get that word of it. It's something about God. See, the thing is, my Bible says we ought not know what to pray for. But if I got that word in me, You'll be suddenly jumping out your mouth that you didn't even know. You weren't even thinking that. You're looking for rent money. But the Lord got you praying for the next door neighbor rent money. Oh, look at it. Look at it. you get it. See, when you learn that prayer is not about you, that's when you become a warrior. See, warriors don't fight for themselves. They fight for others. I'm not even putting somebody on. If I'm a soldier, that means I'm protecting something. I need to pray for me. I'm fighting. Uh oh, I'm fighting somebody else. Lord, teach us to pray. Just as oh, listen to the examples. I love this. I love this verse. Lord, teach us to pray. Just as John also taught his disciples. Example after example after example. Pay attention. So the question is, now technically, if we're just looking at it from the natural standpoint, who set the first example of prayer? John? Well, you know, now I'm, I'm just, just, just follow me. Because if John didn't set that first example, then they wouldn't have used him as a reference. Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. So what you're saying, what you're saying, Pastor, listen, some of y'all are praying, but you don't know how to pray. Some of y'all are praying and you never learn how to pray. You just go straight in asking for stuff. Lord, I need the mortgage paid. Lord, I need to stay, I need steak and eggs and waffle house. Lord, I need the insurance paid. Lord, I need some diapers. 
Lord, Judah hungry, you need some milk. You just, you just go straight in. And nobody, there's a, there's a certain way to go about things. So, so let's look at this. Let's look at this simple definition here. What, what is a prayer warrior, right? A prayer warrior is one who takes part in that battle through prayer. By what? Interceding for what? Others. Well, hold on now. It ain't nothing about it. It's it others. So this is the thing, y'all. There are people that that they really can't pray for themselves because they don't know how, right? So the Lord puts in place to what? Pray for what? Pray for them. To what? Stand in the gap for them, right? Because they need to stand in the gap for you and I. So we got to emulate what he does for others. And it says, and praying for what? Oh, oh this boy right here. People don't, people don't like this. And praying for God's will to be done in all things. Not your will. We quit to pray our will. Oh, is it God's will for you to have nice skin boots? <laughs> Did you know that thing that way? <laughs> Is it, is it his will for you to have a diamond or a bed post? Is it his will? Is it, is it his will for you to have some gold slippers? I mean, is it his will? See, that's the thing. The Lord wants to do everything for us, right? He didn't want to hold nothing back from us, right? But we got to do it according to what? His will. Not my will. Now, I, I ain't going to, we're going to get to it in probably a couple couple of uh, uh, Tuesday down the road, but it's such thing as unclean prayer. Unclean thing, right? See, see could I effectively pray and be a prayer warrior and I get odd in my heart? Oh, I ain't trying to jump the gun. I'm just keeping one. Right? So, so, again, see, see, I'm supposed to be fighting for the Lord, but right, I'm, not, I'm not representing with my unclean prayer. Because somebody that made me mad, hear me, somebody that left my ministry, so now I'm going to pray. That don't even make no sense. So you know I'm going to pray that, that they get cursed because they left? But I love it. Hallelujah. You said the Lord told you to move on. Ha. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray that the spirit of discernment increases in your life. See, I pray. Send them on their way. I ain't got to get off, not go to being unclean and saying things going to fail and this and that and this and that because I got out of my heart or because I, I, I feel I'm mad because they left. You know, we do that, right? People be doing that in their relationships. Ugh. They, be, they be sending them cursing. I'm going to send the devil after you if you break up with me. What? I'm going to go in my prayer closet. You ain't going to leave me. It's witchcraft. What the man pray? That's a shrine of demons up in there. You're talking about I ain't going to go nowhere. What? Right? Which means to be talking about, let me go in the prayer class, you ain't going nowhere. See if she say something in the chat. Hold on. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah. All right. I'll be pretending to be speaking if. if since, since I'm going to bring that topic up with, with relationships and marriage, right? So me and Pastor Denise are equally yoked. The Lord showed me she was going to be my wife, vice versa, right? And according to scripture, right, we can't leave each other. That's not. We got to figure them things out. <laughs> she may have to get We got to figure them things out. We can't run out and go get nobody. No. No, 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 no. But then you have those people that got married and weren't unequally yoked, right? And, okay, let's say if, if the wife was a believer and the, and the husband was, right? Well, he's still covered in all the kids, right? But according to scripture, he, if he leaves, she can re reach her. She, but, but now she can't leave, but he can. But in my case, with Pastor Denise, ain't nobody going to win. I'm with her until I turn the bones. 
She put me in the gas. And that's what you know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. So what is prayer? Prayer is what? It is communicating with God, both speaking to him and what? Hearing from him, right? Remember now, a uh, uh, prayer is just a simple, you just simply what? Talking to the Father, right? And, and when you have a conversation with somebody, right? Normally it's you talk, right? Somebody listen. Then you listen, then they talk, right? And and this is the thing, this is what I love about the Lord. He already knows everything, but he just he really listened to us like he never heard it before. That's what I love about Jesus. I love about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They sit there with all attention and attentiveness as if they don't know, but they know. See, sometimes you got to hear yourself talk and then you hear your answer. You know, I mean, you, you be talking and you and you complaining, but then in your complaining, you hear the solution, and then you fall back. Man, I need to listen to myself. Now, there go the answer right there. But uh, well, this is what we do when we when we talk to the Lord. We already made our mind up about what we gonna do, and we don't give Him room to respond. Huh? This is my room, Lord. This is my room. I took out and already moved in. But that ain't shoot over here. She'll watch them. See there? Well, I thought she checked off the rest. But you know what? Eat him over the bottom of the line. Say them all about these men. What? She check all the boxes. You just threw me there, son. She check all the boxes. Like, but have you ever met somebody that they're asking for your advice, but really they not? They already made their mind up. But what they're really looking for is you to agree with their foolishness, so they can blame you for when it fails. But I'm just being real. Brother Byron, should I marry you? Huh? Should I marry Brother Byron? Come on now. <laughs> it's because the wise man gains counsel before he goes to war. <laughs> and then Brother Byron said, Go on and marry you. And then I'm married, right? And then all them demons bust out of the state. Oh, yes. And I run back to Byron. He said, That's fine. He told me to marry you. And the Lord said, back, But you ain't asked me. You ain't run nothing by me. I would have told you to stay away from that like years ago. I would have given you the discernment to let you know that that was not your kingdom spouse. But see, you know, come on, y'all, let's be real. Once our mind get made up, come on, let's keep it real. We don't care what nobody says. You know, we try to find, you know, we try to find the reason to, to make it work. And then the minute the Lord say, no, you want to get mad. What you mad for? It's something that he sees that you can't see. It's something that he knows that you'll never know. Look, there are people that are in a relationship. I don't care if it's business. I don't care if it's marriage. I don't care. I don't care whatever it is. It's some things that that the Lord that that person has in a heart towards you that you would never know unless you have the room. Because the sign is showing that they love you. Oh, why they can't stand. You. That's the power of prayer. Pray like the Father. Say everything. Now, I want to run my situation by somebody that knew me before I was created in my mother's womb, that knew me before he created the foundations of the earth. What do you want to talk to somebody that know everything? So why do we talk to people that don't know nothing? Uh-oh. What do we do? Did you pray about it? See, that's got to be one of the most convicting questions. Me and, me and Pastor Denise, we, me and Pastor Denise, we've had, um, you heard she said, you better not leave me. I'll do this. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. Me and, me and Pastor Denise, me and Pastor Denise on many occasions, right, we'll be talking about something, and then she'll say, well, did you pray about it? See, now, some people, well, I prayed about it. I, no, you didn't. 
<laughs> and running this whole little scenario, you know. Hey, huh, Pastor, we're gonna do this. Did you did you pray about the Lord today? And then people come up with a line word. Well, the Lord told me. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Did he tell you that? You lying. Because see, that question brings conviction. Because you ain't ran nothing by your word. Jesus. So, let's go to uh, Hebrews 7 and 25, right? Now, if you're coming a prayer warrior, you got to understand the what? The assignment. You got to understand your assignment, right? So when you go 7 and 25 says, therefore, he is able to save forever, completely, perfectly, for eternity, those who come to God through him. Since he always lives, pay attention, you understand this now? Since he always lives to intercede and intervene on their behalf with God. Pay attention. See, in order to become a prayer warrior, we must learn from the prayer warrior. When the ultimate prayer warrior is Jesus himself. And it kind of says here in Hebrews 7 and 25 that it says he always lives to intercede. Oh, what's the truth, man? There's a desire. This is the sign to fight on your behalf. This is the sign to pray and, and, and go against hell and, and bring those desires to the Father and say, Can you bless me? There, there's a, there's, see, to be a prayer warrior, you have to be passionate. Can't be self. Can't, can't be self. See, you got all the people talking about their prayer warriors, but you say, You a prayer warrior on what? To get a house and a car? No, 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 no. A prayer warrior, listen to me, and I see a lot of people think this is talk. True prayer, prayer warriors, they may be dealing with an illness, but they intercede for you to get healed. Because they know the Father going to heal them. So now they don't stand in the gap for you and call for your healing, even though they need one. I don't know if you ever met that brother or sister that, that they didn't came in agreement to see increase in your life go past them exceedingly and abundantly and they need. Okay, y'all not, y'all not, not feeling me. Y'all not feeling me. Imagine you just a day away from eviction, but you come in agreement with somebody so they won't get evicted. Ready? But you still get evicted. You stand, keep your heart pure. Steady. Mm. I can really make sure you don't. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, Lord, now. Now, oh, Lord. But I still need to be able to make sure she didn't lose her. That's true. Because the warrior then said, well, but the Lord told me he's going to supply all my needs. Well, I'm going to need to move quickly on my behalf because he got somebody praying to me. Come on, man. See, the prayer warrior yourself, but the prayer warrior also knows other prayer warriors are praying. Mm -hmm. You ain't out there by yourself. If I got, if, if I'm looking like that brother right here holding that sword, I ain't, I ain't there by myself. I got another standing in the spirit on my behalf, unbeknownst to me. So I got to what? Intercede and intervene. I got to be just like Jesus. Now let's look at Ephesians 6 and 18. Now remember, we're talking about the assignment. Now, to be an effective prayer warrior, see, you got a lot of people fighting for stuff, but they don't even know why they fight. What's your drive? What's your purpose? You decided to scream because you look everybody calling you a prayer warrior? I don't know if you ever saw that. What, what's that movie? Um, oh, man. What did he call that brother? William Wallace. And, um, uh, I can't think of the movie. He was, he was a, it was a Scottish movie, and he was he rallied all the, the Irish folks to come up against Brave. Braveheart. Now, look, you notice how viciously they fought? Because they had a what? A purpose. 
They came to get, see, they were fighting for something, right? Now, this is the thing. How can you effectively fight if you don't know what you're fighting for? Ephesians 6 and 18 said, with all prayer, pay attention. Pay attention to that all. Not some, not a few, not many. It said, with all prayer and petition. Praying with what specific request at all times? Well, well, I'm gonna say just about this. I, I can't just pray on Christmas. What you do? You can't pray when the rocket uh, uh, playing home games. But what you saying, Lord? I can't. I can't cheer on for CJ Stroud when the Texans play. No, 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 no. He said, with all prayer and petition, pray with specific request at all times. See, a lot of folks just be praying, but your prayer has no target. You know, thank you. It's not you be you be fooled. I don't, I, whatever it may be, some some beans, some rice, but what you're doing, Lord? You know I'm hungry. You know I'm family hungry, Lord. You are gonna supply. What what the Lord is saying? And I I hear you, son or daughter, but be more specific. Well, be a farmer, right? And you need a couple of your cows may got sick. So what you really need is you need some more cows. <laughs> and you need a veterinarian. So you got to be specific. Lord, send me the veterinarian. So you got to be specific. See, you got to shoot a gun, hear me, at a target, but you shoot in the air. That don't make no sense. The bullet ain't going to hit nothing. You got to aim it at something and be direct. Same thing with your prayers. Your, your prayers have to be that bullet. You have to hit the target. You just can't be just saying stuff in vain and repetitions and, well, I pray. No, you didn't. You, you, you didn't make any sense. So when you go to McDonald's, what do you do? You just tell them, look, I don't want a hamburger. Well, hold on. I don't want a hamburger ain't on the menu. Number one, what you want? Number one, or number two, or hot and spicy, or McDonald's, what you want? You got to be what? Sassy. You, you can't go to Mastro's at the steakhouse talking about you want uh, 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 some nacho. They don't serve nacho at Mastro. You can go look at you like you're crazy. You got to be specific. It says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times. In the what? Well, repeat that. In the what? Say that again. In the who? And what spirit? You show? In the, in, the, in the Holy Ghost, right? In the spirit, right? Oh, praying in spirits, but not the Holy Spirit. But when it said that with all prayer and petition, wait, what you saying, Lord? The assignment is when I pray that I need to be led by your spirit in my prayer. I need to be led by your spirit in that specific what? Request. Because the spirit of the Lord knows it to the detail. So the thing is, if there's no submission in you, you're not willing to listen, then your prayers are futile. And with this in view, what? Stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for what? Say it loud. For who? All God's. Wait, wait, hold on. Does it say and petition for Pastor Jordan? For me, Pastor Jordan. For me, Prophet Jim. <laughs> Be natural. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It said for all God's people. So if you're not a people person, then I'm going to question your will. You said for all God's people. See, see, what we do is we become the all. You ain't, you ain't prostrating yourself or not. But yourself. You got to understand the assignment. The assignment of prayer is for what? All God's people. The assignment of prayer is to be, uh, 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 you have to have perseverance. You got to have diligence. You got to make specific requests. But but prayer is, it got to be led by the Holy Spirit, not by your angel. A lot of people praying in their emotions. I, I mean, listen. 
it, it, you have to be real with yourself. I've done it. We've all done it too, in one form or fashion, right? I've had people pray, right? But really, they were praying their desire so they could get the profit. Of, let me be quiet. You know, I asked somebody, oh, Lord, we coming in agreement for Sister Antonia. And your word says, you're going to supply all the need according to your riches and glory. Now, Lord, huh, bless her, Lord, bless her. Now, you know, you, you know she's a cosmetologist. Bless her. Bless her. Send her $10 million, Lord. Send her $10 million of financing. Bless her, Lord. But my heart ain't right because I'm looking for the $10 million. Oh, 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 oh. Well, hold on. First of all, is she ready for $10 million? Am I being led by the Spirit? Why am I putting God in the box with just $10 million? You're kidding. You're kidding. See, while I'm trying to Pray an unclean prayer so I can benefit. Them. It's selfish. Y'all get it. That's not saying we don't want Antonia to be blessed, right? That's not saying that. Not him. We, we want her to be that to get that what exceedingly and abundant, right? But we first got to understand the assignment. See, that's like me praying over Judah. And then, I'm, and then I'm praying that Judah will drive me to the Toyota Center tomorrow. Judah ain't equipped to do that yet. <laughs> not, not tomorrow, right? I'm not saying he won't be able to do it, but he ain't able to do it tomorrow, right? So, so man, it's kind of out of order. You see what I'm saying? Now, 1 Thessalonians 5, starting in verse 16. It says, now remember, we're talking about prayer. See, to be a prayer warrior, you got to be what? You got to be an intercessor. You got to be willing to intervene, right? You got to pray for what? All God's people, right? Are you ready for this? It says, verse 16 says, rejoice always and delight in your faith. Hold on. You got a lot of people praying, but they're praying out of depression. they praying mad and angry. It says, rejoice always and delight in your faith. What is faith? The word. So when you pray, you should be praying God's word. But why you ain't delighting and why you ain't rejoicing? Verse 17 says, be unceasing and persistent in prayer. See, it's only a proper person that said, I already prayed for that and it didn't happen. Oh, I can give you an example. It's a, it's a, it's a world famous artist. Y'all know who he is. He got shoes and everything. Yeezys. Come on now. That's it. Mm -hmm. He had an interview and said, when I prayed stuff to Jesus, it didn't happen. No, it didn't happen when you wanted to happen. So then he turned his back. Well, now, that is arrogant to say, I prayed and ain't nothing happened. But my Bible clearly said it must be according to what? God's will. Right? See, you may be praying for something that you think is good for you right now, but it ain't God's will for you. Verse 18 says, in every, well, it's verse 17 says, be unceasing and persistent in your prayer. A lot of us are in, we live an inconsistent lifestyle. So how do you think your prayer life is? You got to be what? Persistent in prayer, right? Remember the, remember the, uh, uh, the, 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 the woman, the persistent widow? She wore down a brother that didn't even know the Lord. That's how persistent she was. Then Saul kept him. Well, hold on, Lord. So you're saying we got to do that too? Uh -huh. Huh? If this woman could wear down a non-believer, what makes you think that what, what you think that a persistent to do to somebody that desire to give you those things that you're asking? But we got to be sick. You can't be arrogant. Lord, I asked you that in 2006, and it didn't happen. So you said, Bastard, <laughs> who gives you everything you want when you ask? Come on now, Steve. I mean, I don't know where they passed the next to me. Uh, 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 oh, now. Pastor, stop what you're doing and pray for me now. Well, come on now. You're tripping. Check the spirit. 
You just demand the name when you want stuff done. It's like that. At the end of the day, we still got the word ask. We got to keep asking, right? Because believe it or not, let's say that this, this is what you love about the Lord. The Lord will have you asking for something over and over again. He already know the answer. You ain't going to get it. It is great on you to see it. Because you keep asking, and then he's going to keep revealing, and then you're going to realize, oh, that's why that didn't get answered. Oh, Lord, I, I wasn't ready for that right now. Have you ever, I think a lot of us, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to speak on me, you know, the woman rose for sin, right? And, and, and 15 years ago, if, I, if you would have gave me that Rolls Royce, I would have disrespected it. What, what do I mean by that? I would have complained and murmured. Well, $5,000 for an oil change. $20,000 to change a tire. So pretty much I would have cursed my own blessing. Y'all give it. See, but some things the Lord just wants to see if you're going to keep on asking. Abraham, uh oh, he waited twenty five years for his promise. Twenty five years. He not so much that he came up with. Uh oh, remember he stepped out a little bit. They gave up. He came up with Ishmael. Imagine praying for something for twenty five years. You know, the law technically that can become an idol. You've been wanting something so bad. So bad. Then you finally get it. The Lord got attention to make sure that that don't come before him. So that's why we got to keep asking. We got to be unceasing. When it says something is unceasing, that means it never quits. It never quits. Let me tell you something. See, see Judah's getting to that age. To where Judah is going to tell <laughs> Judah's going to tell his mama and daddy, right? He's going to make he's going to start making requests. And I think we can all admit to this. And he's going to say, "Daddy, daddy, mama, I want to go to McDonald's. Whatever it may be, McDonald's. But hear me. He's going to go play with his truck toy." Get the mother come back. Daddy, mama, I want to go to McDonald's. Then they're going to turn around because they're going to be tired of you to ask him. He's going to McDonald's at 3 o'clock. Hear me. Let me tell you something about being persistent. So what Judah is going to do, barely know how to read time, but he's going to all of a sudden know how to read time. <laughs> now it's 12 noon. Judah has been having to go to McDonald's since this morning. But now he didn't got an answer from his mom and daddy at three. 1245 come. Huh. Uh -huh. And uh, she follows 18 minutes when we go to McDonald's. We good. I got you. We got you. We got you. And, and then 130 come. Huh. Do it go. You gonna lean in there? No? Hey, y'all. Y'all busy? Um, look, we got about an hour and a half. You wanna make down? Now, let me tell you something about unceasing and being persistent. It begins to wear on you. So now, since mama and daddy set a time, a date, and said yes, Judah is now going to hold them to that because that sounds like a promise to me. See, sometimes you got to remind the Lord of his promises. He forgot. He want to see if you did. Well, it's four o'clock, come. Huh? You see how that time window getting short? Mama, daddy, y'all still got your sleep clothes on. Mama, you don't put makeup on and stuff. What are you doing? You know what I mean? I got my hands and I'm 
Yeah. 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 Then 2.30 come. You ain't saying too much. You just look at that. They say the same thing where it's your next point. It's 2.30 now. But see, Judah ain't giving up. Judah, now he, okay. Y'all know, y'all already said yes. And then, you know, now we communicate this look at Next about 250. Judah got the truck and they come out of the room. He's sitting by the door. Uh, mama, that one. I'm with you. I'm with you. Sometimes the Lord got to see that we standing by the door. <laughs> I think I see you standing by the door. Some of us are praying for stuff that you don't even believe in. You're praying for a heaven, but you ain't acting like you did. You're praying for increase. You, you're praying for your business to grow. You're praying for your business idea, but you ain't even got a bank account. See, it's the things you got to do, and it shows the Lord that you're standing by the door. Lord, I'm waiting on you. Lord, now you me. We were going to make down. And I'm waiting on you. And the last time I checked, the Lord is a promise to you. He don't break promises. What would happen if Jaden and Ashley got jumped out the door with a truck beat on McDonald's and they tell him we ain't going to McDonald's. We're going to the wall. Say that again. We ain't going to. We're going to go tomorrow. I have a funny feeling that Judah going to cut her foot. <laughs> Judah going to slam that truck. He's going to start crying, screaming. Calm down, Judah. You're so busy. And You ready for this? Sometimes your tears are pushing the room. Call me, come on. They may be mumbling, but they all in the car going to McDonald's. Sometimes your prayer is through your tears. Don't get it. Sometimes your prayer. Is through your tears. What does they come out your mouth? But them tears is the persistence. Them tears is the unceasing. Mm -mm, Lord, you said it. I'm standing by the door. I'm waiting on you. But a lot of us ain't even standing by the door. Bunker. Let me go to the next verse. Where's this verse? Now skip a row. Okay, let's let's go to let's go to Matthew six. It's at eight oh five. We're okay. I was doing good. All right. Matthew six. And we're still talking about the assignment. Now what's crazy is, see, see, Jaden and Ashley got Judah and Ari. But see, see, Sister Sarah got three little ones. Look, imagine three. Imagine three little ones standing by the door. And they all just, you know, they just all say, Let's go. Matthew 6, 5 and 8. Now remember, we're talking about being a prayer warrior. Remember, we're talking about the assignment. Verse 5 says, also, when you pray, see, we need to talk about what not to do 
before we talk about what to do, right? Verse 5 says, now prayer warriors, make sure also when you pray, do not be like the what? Hypocrites. For they love to pray in public, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets so that they may be seen by men. See, you got people praying because they want to get worship by other folks about how they pray. Well, that's your own prayer. See, the prayer is communication with you and the Lord, not with you and man. Not with you and now listen. Now we yeah, we pray in church and we pray, right? But we're still praying to the Father. But my whole thing is it ain't about what you saying. And how you feel? I'm doing it this between me and my me and my dad. It says, "I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full." Do you want to be that prayer warrior that you pray because you're trying to stand in front of folks, making people believe that you know how to pray, and that's your reward? Verse six says, "But when you pray, go into your what? Most private room. Is that what? Close the door." And pray to your father who's in what? Secret. Right? Now, I know some of y'all read that. Hold on, Lord. See, this is what I used to say. Oh, I got to go. I used to go hide in the corner to pray. Come on, I'm going to be real. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to be unceasing. Never persistent. I got to work. I got to eat. Call the what? No. Listen. No. I'm not saying you won't have no moments. Right? But I told y'all this last week. See, this is a tallit that I wear, right? So technically, I can give you a demonstration of when it says go into a private room and close the door. Y'all gonna be acting a fool. I can do this. And then, then the father can be talking. Like, That's what it's saying, going to a, a private place. Because do you want everybody in your conversation? Hmm? <laughs> you don't need to be talking about with the, with the father. I'll keep you all in my conversation. Because now I give you hear it. My communication and my friend. I, I got some issues. I don't need you. I don't need you. I ain't none of your business. Between me and the Father. But it says, but when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door, and pray to your Father who's in what? Secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will what? Reward you. See, you got to be mindful of who's doing the rewarding. See, you got a lot of people that do all this stuff, and, and, and they're looking for you to, oh, man, you can pray, man. Let me go and give them $100. All right. All right. Let me pray, honey. But the Lord said, the Lord said, though, give me a thousand dollars. What? You do not say the Lord said that 50 of y'all are there with 10,000 dollars. So before I release this prayer, that's true. Look at that. That's the line of the self. Before I release this prayer, Y'all need to give me 10K. <laughs> you know, strange though, there's people out there doing that. And you know what's other crazy? There's people out there paying it. And, and Jesus said, give him 10K. And, and he's going he gonna to release a prayer. It's proper line and if the release is you don't have 10k no more. I can oh, Lord Jesus. Look, y'all, we got to pray for the body, we got to pray for leadership, we got to pray for people not to fall victim to mammon, the love of money, right? We got to pray that people don't pick their gifts because that gift ain't for you. Okay, we're talking about prayer. Verse 6 says, and when you pray, pay attention. Do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do. 
Okay, I, I know that may confuse some of y'all. Pay attention. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. You ready? So now my Bible told me to be unceasing, right? To be specific, right? And, and so that means I'm okay. Well, Lord, what you saying now? I just used the example about going to McDonald's and this and that, this and that. But what like he's saying here about do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. That goes back to verse five. Okay. Well, they praying for the people. See, they're not praying for others. They praying for people to see them pray, right? They're using these big fancy words, right? But what's meaningless is they're praying for something that is not God's will. So I said that when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they for they think they will be heard because of their many words. They pray and stuff being led by a different spirit, not the Holy Spirit. It's meaningless. You got, I'm telling y'all, seriously, y'all got some people that they will use God's word and swear up and down that it's coming from the Lord, but all they're doing is speaking word curses over somebody that they hate. It's, you know, you don't have to pray, pray word curses and, 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 and it rips your witch praying or what. But you got the, the congregation thinking that you're praying judgment on somebody. It's going to be led by what? The spirit. See, you got to be careful. See, talk, talk to all the prophets under the sound of my voice. Let me tell you something what Satan tries to do. My Bible says that there's life and death and the power of the what? Of the tongue, right? So what Satan does, he does this. Now, he does this to the entire body, but hear me, prophets. Hear me. Satan knows you got power even when you don't think you know you got power. Or he knows you got power because you know you got power. But what he'll try to do is frustrate you or do something demonic to get you to use that power. Mm -mm. To speak something, uh-oh, against your destiny, somebody else's destiny, because you're doing it out of frustration. And so the enemy knows you got the power to call it forth. So he'll use it to further his agenda. Because he don't have the power, but he knows what you do. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful you're not praying your frustration in Because you're a prophet. Your words come to pass. So you messing around, you know what I'm saying? Oh, they did. You know, you know people, they touched me, they touched the Lord, they gonna drop dead. Well, hold on. <laughs> well, hold on. Well, this is a little Well, <laughs> people kind of abused that verse with, with, with Peter when they went to the line and they fell dead, right? They abused him. They abused that, right? But that ain't for you to call death. That's up to the Lord if they're gonna drop, if they're gonna drop dead. Right? And you got to be led in that. See, you know, this is what I love about Jesus, right? He loves us so much, but that's why he always tells us to what? Love our enemies. He, he, he remember this. There are going to be things that people do to us, right? That you think that you're supposed to call death to them. Just, just hear me out. Well, when Paul turned over three brothers to Satan, read it. He turned, he, he said, I'm turning you over to Satan in hopes that your soul may be saved. So obviously they was doing something very fast. One gentleman was sleeping with his daddy mom. So he turned one brother over to Satan that was sleeping with his mom, with, with his daddy's mom. When he Wait. And then what? It's that his wife. I'm sorry. Not mine. It's crazy too. <laughs> the was sleeping with his daddy's wife, which it was his stepmom. Still crazy, right? The thing was the church wasn't saying nothing about. Think about that because he had a little chicken. That little chicken. 
Yeah, you say, God, I know I'm sleeping with my, my, my daddy mama, but what well, daddy wife, which is my stepmama, be quiet. But say, uh, 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 turn him over to Satan. Now, the whole point of being turned over to Satan was still in hopes that their soul will be saved. So you got to be careful, too, that even when things, the, the Lord does get angry, right? But you got to make sure you're being angry under the Lord's mindset and not your own. Because you'll mess around and, and start praying unclean prayers. And, and, and sending out word curses to people, right? Including yourself. Including yourself. Say it'll frustrate you so much that he'll get you to speak against your own anointing. Your own assignment. You have to be very careful. See, I asked Denise, she, she told me that about, she said, she would tell me, be careful what you say. Be careful. Because you are equipped with the power to manifest it. And the enemy wants to use you to create or speak into existence this situation. See, I was going through some pretty strange stuff, right? Now I'm saying it's done. Well, now you ain't about to fire yourself. She said, I just walk. Well, no. That's your wife. Be careful. Right? The enemy will get you to curse the very thing that should be a blessing in your life. Here in verse 8, remember we're talking about being a prayer warrior. So do not be like them praying as they do. For your father knows what you need before you what? Ask him. See, that's what encrypts a, 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 a prayer warrior. That's why it's so easy for a prayer warrior to intercede and intervene for you. Because the father already knows what I need. Mean. Daddy got me. The situation don't change. His peace and his grace is going to keep me. So now let me stand in agreement with you so we can call forth what you do. Let's stand against hell together. So, because I'm not, see, it's hard to, you know, when you need, it's hard to help somebody else when they need, right? You ever heard that saying, well, how can you help somebody and you can't even help your what? Yourself. Technically, we can't help ourselves, but the Lord helps us. So our reliance comes from Him. So if I know that the Lord got me, then I'm more confident to stand and, 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 and with you to know that he got you too. That's a prayer warrior. A prayer warrior ain't weak. A prayer warrior ain't no coward. A prayer warrior is not selfish. See, let me tell you something. Just, just to let y'all know, once you become connected with the mantle, hear me, better pay, better pay attention now, Everybody potato salad is not bad. It only becomes bad when you go to mixing everybody potato salad. I don't get it. See, everybody's milk ain't bad, but it gets bad when I go to mixing all the milk. You may keep your refrigerator at this temperature. You may keep your refrigerator at, at this temperature, right? I go to mixing the milk. Now I'm mixing, mixing lukewarm milk with cold milk. See, I like my milk cold. Some people like their milk warm. What's not me? Right? Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm not going with this. <laughs> Let me tell you something about being a prayer warrior for the mansion. And this is for any house that you've committed and connected to and being led by the Lord to be there. Pay attention. When you become connected, Believe it or not, everybody gets affected. Pay attention. Why do you think hell is after me and Denise? Well, if he's put us over the house, that means he put us at the head of the house. And how you kill something is you come after the what? The head. So if you can distort the head, confuse the head, infect the head, then it will what? Distort, confuse, infect the what? The body. 
Now, this is the thing about when you become connected with a ministry. Pay attention, you two. That's why many of you all are thick in the spirit. Because you're connecting to this person, this ministry, then this ministry, and this ministry with no discernment, and now you're mixing all the sicknesses. But you ain't praying. Hear me. Now, when you're connected with the mantle, it's a tax that the mantle will get that First Baptist won't get. And hear me, Methodist? No. Right? Because you're connected to the you're connected to that. You ready? So by being a pastor of this house, you know when we do a corporate fast, I mean, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to teach y'all something here. Do you know that when we do a corporate fast, that your struggle becomes the church's struggle? I don't believe you, because we're all spiritually connected in that fast. So do you know that, okay, we're all supposed to be doing a corporate fast, right? Do you know spiritually you can tell when people have broken the fast? They don't have a fast. No, eight to six. <laughs> you know. But the thing is, normally when you first start the fast, right, that fast starts purging up things, right? It starts exposing things, right? I don't know about y'all, you ever been on the fast and you get a little snappy? Oh, well, there's a little snappy demon that was in there. <laughs> the snappy was in right? A little snappy got to come up. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I hope y'all understand what I'm saying now. <laughs> Look, okay, see, uh, look, she said, me. Yes, the fast becomes harder because you can feel the discord. Me, she said, snap. Okay. But, but real, right? You're like, you know, you're just snarling and grinding and stuff. And, well, now, that fast that woke up, you snap is all the big, you know? You snap it, gotta get up in it. <laughs> the thing about fast and Judah, you ain't going out there. You trying to push the door open? Look, the thing about fasting, y'all, and the thing about prayer is it connects the house. So now you can feel the weaknesses and you can feel the strengths. So the thing is, once you make your mind up to be connected to a house, then you take on the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you move faster and we blow. Somebody, and it ain't to put nobody on glass. Oh, somebody's struggling with. Somebody's struggling with. Somebody's struggling with. Right? Ooh. So now, that, that's where the prayer warrior come in. Because now we got to intercede that much. they like, oh, hold on. We got to we gotta intercede for brother or sister or brother or so-and-so. So so this going on. I'm not saying that the Lord will give a specific name, but I'm not saying he don't need it. That's <laughs> Being a pastor, the Lord tells me and Denise things about the sheep. But it's our job to pray, not to be embarrassed, it's to pray. And then to be led by the Spirit, okay, Lord, how you want us to handle this? Right? See, if you're not, how can you lead a ministry and you don't know how to pray? How can you say the Lord called you to do this and do that, but you ain't even a prayer warrior? So how are you going to pray and cover what belongs? Who called me to, to, to be the pastor over two minutes? When last time you finished asking me to Oh, uh, on fire. I don't know when that's going to happen. I'm not being prayed with an old five, but the Lord called you to be over 10 billion people. <laughs> that didn't make no sense. The thing, the thing is, being, being a pastor, y'all, seriously, right? The Lord will lay up. All right, pray for this. Pray for her about this. Pray for him about this. Pray for that. Mm -mm -mm. Pray that get broken. Cast that down. Look, y'all, when we are connected together, do you know hell will attack the house with things? 
Hell will try to attack the house with discord. Hear me? Trying to create threefold churches within the church. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what we've been through. I'm telling you, what's crazy is the Lord showed us, showed us who died, died off of that. But we still had to operate in love. But see, my prayer changed. Mm -hmm, Lord. Good. It's either they line up or get them out. Get them out of here, Lord. Nuh-uh. You, you, you're not, you're not a, a God of, of, of chaos. You're a God of order. Lord, bring us those that want to line up with the vision that you place in this house. See, the whole prayer changed. It ain't attacking, but I'm attacking them things to get a body. But see, look, y'all, when, when, when you're connected to the house, it may be some things, hear me, that you've never struggled with before, but since we're doing the corporate fast, you're feeling the struggle. I know I ain't, I know I ain't tripping. Oh, Lord, now that ain't my issue. But the thing is, we're all connected. So it is. Okay. Hear me. Hear me. We all moving together. Look, yo, if you look at your body, right? If, 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 for example, let's say I took a knife and I cut your, your finger, right? Well, technically, even though the pain is in your finger, but your body is still experiencing all the pain. So it's no different. It's no different with the, the, uh, uh, the body of Christ. It's no different. It's no different when we're connected uh, uh, with the mantle. We're going to feel things. We're going to go through things together. So that, that's what I'm telling you when y'all when y'all fasting. Don't be talking. You you went to six and you're lying. The fast was from from six a.m. to six p.m. and you had a whole hamburger at three. Talking about you was together with the with the with the mantle. Oh, no, you wouldn't. You messing it up, everybody. You making it more difficult. <laughs> so don't do that now. Or you got some people that they they started at six. I mean, started six a.m. Make the six p.m. But they didn't pray. So you just died then at this point. Like you didn't see them singing them. It's gonna be going in. You're gonna be going in for the man. You were out there looking at the clock like children. We can all did it. Come on now. With the fast. <laughs> we fast in at six. Lord, it's three. Oh, Jesus. And then you're going to try to make yourself busy. I've done it before. The fast in at six. I got the food in the microwave at five. I can tell you. Lord, I'm going to be busy. I'm going to go to work. I should have been praying. I'm just looking at the Bible and smiling. <laughs> Come on, now, you know how you're lying. You know, just when you're fast, you just come up with these mysterious ailments. Oh, Lord, uh, I can't make it back. On the top. Shit. So I've been hot two hours. And you tapping out. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it right here. Now, just, just open up the floor to any questions, because we'll go into part two next week. But anybody got any questions about uh, the prayer warrior, what we talked about tonight? Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I want to know if, if you're wrong. And I'm going to give you an example. My daughter was working at the daycare and her boss fired her after a fight. Well, she was wrong. And so she come home and tells me about it. And I said, but well, don't worry about it. I said, because I'm just been praying as God. It was been wrong. She did to you to turn it back on her. <laughs> so, and a few days she would walk out the building mm -hmm. with a chair and got her job. So, you say, was that wrong? Okay. I, now, this is the thing, right? Now, the Bible does say the enemy comes at you one way, or it's in the enemy back seven different ways, right? But my response to that is was that a wrong prayer? It's only wrong if it wasn't led by the Lord. You got to make sure 
that you're not, that, that, that prayer wasn't done. Now, I ain't saying, I'm just hearing it. It wasn't done out of retaliation. Right? See, let me tell you something. Okay, for those that didn't hear the question, um, um, she said that her daughter lost the job and then she prayed and then a few days later, the lady that fired her ended up losing her job and being walked out by the sheriff. And she's asking, uh, was that right? Well, first thing is first, you got to be led by the Lord in that prayer. Make sure you're not doing it out of what? Retaliation, right? Now, I, I will say this. Sometimes we tend to blame the enemy for something that was all the Lord's doing. Let me, let me give you, let me give you one, a, a great example. Happened to me. So I was uh, doing taxes in this particular location. I was there for about four or five years. Four years, four or five years. Rent was like three rooms, two rooms. Everything was lovely. Like I was probably one of three people in the building. I was in the, in the, in the I, I mean, everything was fine. I was comfortable, right? I'm, I mean, I'm, so loud. I'm a loud person. Talk loud, talk, door open, da da da. But then all of a sudden, it became a problem. The landlord telling me to close the door. The lady from the other building was complaining about me. This and that. And I'm just sitting there like confused. Like, man, what? You ain't had a problem with this in years. Now all of a sudden, there's all this conflict. So, you know, I'm sitting there saying, the devil is a liar, da da da. da. Whoop de whoop, da da da. Until I realized it was the Lord pushing me into ownership that I was reading. He made the situation so uncomfortable that I was forced to go right up the street and go buy a building. And it had nothing to do with him. That had everything to do with him to increase me. So my point is, you got to make sure when you go to praying and screaming out stuff, that's coming from Christ. It ain't coming from your feelings. Because I'm saying the devil is a lot of hope. Whole wild is the Lord. Whole wild, it was his doing. He ruffled up them demons to irritate me. To be pushed me into, uh, uh, I was in two rooms that may have been, what, 300 square feet? To go push me into 2,000? See? But to answer your question, okay, she may have got put out in handcuffs. But the only thing I can say is as long as it's, it's being led by the Spirit of the Lord, you will meet what the Spirit of the Lord tells you to repeat. Period. And it just got to, now I heard you say this. You said she did something wrong too? Uh, did I hear that? No. You ain't do nothing. You ain't do nothing. Just, it was just, I, I, I just kind of like, like, I was supposed to get off at Judy. I said, it was like, for example, um, I mean, you want her job, and she'll do mine because she's going to do it at her job. And it's like, um, instead of her being good at the coordinator, doing the office stuff, like making the calendars and blah, 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 she can do that real good on the computer. I don't know why to have her, really. But she'll go do my job with the kids and let me do her job, and now I have to be there along with washing clothes and doing stuff because that was all part of my job description except for her part. So mom was like, you let them take advantage of you, this, this, and that. And then when the big bosses came down and found out about it, they started checking cameras. She ain't stand up for me. It's like she threw one of the bus and let them people fire me. So and what happened? So after you got let go, she got the head cut. What happened after that? Like, they worked there and they told me that they fired they had fired her too. And they had <laughs> laid her out of there. They got rid of her. So I found out you didn't know what happened to you that day. What, what, what was the next situation that went in? So uh -huh. he made me um, realize that the only reason he had me there because if I wouldn't have got that job, my record would never got exposed. I would never know that was on my record. So that job was really used to clean my record up and it helped me lead me to somewhere better. I actually had some girl pull the gun on me and I didn't even care about that. Like, I was still willing to go to work. I just wanted to work so much. But I didn't want me working now. So, and so what we may think is coming from the enemy. 
is actually God's hand shifting. Your season was up then, right? right? It was up, but like I said, but, 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 like I said, to answer your question, as long as it's spirit led by the Holy Ghost, right? I mean, because my mom says we got to be subject to the spirit. We can't get into our feelings in prayer. We can't. Because you, you, you will go to saying stuff and doing stuff that is not of the home, you know, seriously. And, and you know, it's crazy. We all make that mistake. Because somebody is not a killer. Let me tell you something about the Lord, right? But what I love about Jesus is he became man so he understands, he understands our emotions and our feelings, right? You know? And, 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 and we know we be saying stuff we ain't going to be saying. Right? That's why you got to go to that secret place. Lord, and sometimes he'll just let you get it all out. And he'll say, you finish? Now listen. The scenario that we went through with these individuals that was attacking us and the house that we got from them that they were about to lose in the foreclosure I'm telling you, it was many days, and I told the Lord, that's unfair. Lord, you called us out here. Lord, you showed me this house in a dream. I'm confused. What is this happening? I'm confused, Lord. Why are we going through this? But I, then the Lord said, "You got this is what he said now. He said, understand your assignment. Hell don't want you out here. Hell don't play fair. They're going to do whatever they got to do. Hell was looking for us to tuck our tail and go back to H Town. Hell was looking for us to tap out. That wasn't a sign. But the Lord showed us a sign of Him that we never saw before. Wasn't it fair? No, on the surface it wasn't fair, but, but did it bring increase? Yes, it did. Did it put us in a place to intercede for the couple that was coming at us wrongfully? Sometimes the Lord will put you in an uncomfortable position to intercede for the very one that's attacking. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. The Lord will put you in an uncomfortable position that you think is unfair to position you to intercede for the very one that's attacking. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. It was hard with us with them. I'll never forget when I when I saw them. Okay, we bought a house from a gentleman whose brother stayed two houses down from us. I've said this before, unbeknownst to us, when we first moved into the house, the brother told all the neighbors in the neighborhood, watch me get them kicked out of their house in a couple of months. We didn't know this. So the wild plan was to get us to, to bring the mortgage back current, and then they lawfully get us out the house so they could get the house back. Meanwhile, you know, she harassing, they lying. Remember one time it was I, I was outside and she said, Yeah, you stop up with that Christian. It's all kinds of stuff. She was looking at what you looking at, you know, just there's all kind of and when I tell you that was that was when I tell you that was difficult for us. To stare hell in the face and they, they don't care. And like you're doing everything you can to fight, but it seems like they winning. But then they hear the Lord say, pray for their soul. What I'm telling you is nobody said life is fair. That didn't make me no less a child of God. That didn't make the assignment no less the calling that he had on my life. But that still don't mean that 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 dismisses the hell you got to go through. Well, we lost the house. Right? We lost the house. But they lose Jesus. 
We lost the house, but we ain't been, did nothing but increase since we left the house. But was it easy? No, it was not. Was it, was it me questioning, Lord, what's I'm confused? I, I remember when I lost my first house because I was full of sin. But Lord, I rolled with you. I'm confused. Right there. We went there for three years. So imagine being somewhere for three years where you now rolling yourself. Right? But the whole while, man, I mean, we would be here at church. We look on the cameras. We would see cards that we didn't recognize. We, would, we had PTSD, brother. I wasn't in war, but we had PTSD because they would always come to the house, always putting up notes on the door. They tried to unlawfully uh, 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 evict us five, six times. Had to spend $10,000, $12,000 on a lawyer, man. That, I mean, that, that mess was crazy. It was crazy. And the thing was, it wasn't that we did anything wrong, but it was the assignment we accepted. What are you telling people, man? This ain't no popcorn stuff rolling with Jesus. I was saying, you got to be willing to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow him. This is something that this is what most people don't know. We how much that cross weighed that he took up Galgano for 300 pounds. Somebody beat you to and you got to climb, you got to bring a, 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 a 300 pound cross, beat you. And if you know anything about gravity, going up is heavier. But he took it up there for me and you. So who am I? I I ain't to take no cross up no hill. Who am I? So I sit there and said, he made a promise and he fulfilled it. It ain't always fair. Well, but I can kill him. I'm gonna be with Jesus. Whatever. Unfair, unfair to me till, till I die. Oh well. The God I serve, he's a, he's a God of justice. So whatever happened to them, the Lord took care of it. But I'm not supposed to be proud. I ain't supposed to uh, damn any boo-boo. I ain't supposed to do none of that. That's what your behind get. Touching the anointing. And then I get all prideful. Uh-huh. Give me meaning that. Yeah, he touched Pastor George. See what happened? See? See? That's what he's going to trip me. When I tell you the Lord will test your heart, he'll test it. He'll tell it. To sit there and stare the enemy in the face. This is what's crazy. Though the brother that was in agreement with our demise come to find out this was crazy. He tried to kill himself. Cops came. I'll never forget. He, he, he had a motorcycle. And he left the motorcycle running in the garage, passed out. Somebody called the ambulance. And then he he got, you know, he got up and he was shaking with this, that, and nothing, all that. And his brother came over. The very one that's been attacking us. And you know what I did? I said, no, we just checking up on you, seeing is everything okay. But I can look at that devil and that demon. That was confusing to him. You've been my arch nemesis for three years, and I'm asking you, are you okay? And is your brother all right? Come on now. The Lord will check your heart. Now, what's, what's crazy is when you let the Lord be the Lord, come to find out he called a case, and I think he's doing 15 years now. I lost the house. But he's in, he's in jail right now. And the lawyer that the, the crooked lawyer that they were in cahoots with had gotten into a very bad accident and couldn't walk for six months. But prayers were not. See, this is what I'm trying to get y'all. I wasn't praying. Lord, take his head off. Lord, drop him away. Stay. Ha! He took. He handled all of it. We just heard what happened. They wasn't no, because Bob said, don't celebrate because somebody, don't do that. Right, don't do that. But, but, but made sure he backed up his promise of avenging us. That's it. 
So, so at the time, it was uncomfortable. At the time, it was unfair. At the time, it did not make no sense. But the Lord had to get us. The Lord had to get us out of that house. I'm telling you, being a Christian is not easy. You got YouTubers. Oh, if I want to be a problem. If you hear me, yeah, problem. But you're not prepared for the hell that a prophet goes through. Simply just saying, forget prophet, apostle, forget all that. You simply saying, yes, it's a bunch of hell that comes with it. Don't make my mind up the road with you. Hell don't like that. That's what I'm trying to get y'all to see. Like, like you got to be equipped in this thing with the Lord. You just can't learn his word and don't be tested by it. What's crazy is, and, 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 and we'll shut it down. What's crazy is, you'll find out some people you think was with you been against you the whole entire time. And you know what? <clears throat> That's not easy. It breaks your heart. And you know what? You know what I love about the Lord? He doesn't dismiss our feelings. He don't dismiss our anger towards it. He don't dismiss, right? But he wants us to get it out, but he don't want us to, he don't want it to rest in us where it starts to grow. Does that make sense? Because you got to look at the lesson that you learned from it, right? I mean, I, I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. Is that something that I would want to experience again? No, right? No. Is that something that I would have preferred to just happen to me? And not to Denise and the boys, yes, right? But I would be lying saying it didn't make me better who I am today because of that, right? And the thing is, if the Lord got us through it, then he'll definitely get others through their situation, right? And we can understand, even though we got the power, hear me, we, we got his word, listen, see, that, that you can listen to me. You too, everybody. You can listen to me. Do we have the power to heal? Of course we do. Of course we do. Do we got the power to call people from the dead? Read your Bible. We do, right? Do we have the power to where, let's say a loved one is riddled with cancer, do we have the power that's in us, which is Jesus, to heal them? Can they be healed? Yes. There were the brighter things in but this is the caveat. It must be according to God's will. Even though he has the power to heal that person, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to heal them. Right. And that's a good thing, too, because I learned not to pray for stuff when people be going through certain situations. Like, you can see they struggle and see the stuff that they're going through. And you intervene and start asking God to let this stop happening to them. Uh, and he, he might answer that prayer and let it stop, but he was allowing it to happen to save them. He let them go through all this hell to bring them to so, 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 so she just brought up a good point. You ready for this? That's why you can't get emotional when people are going through things. Because I'm going to tell you, this, the stuff I went through, I'm going to say this, when I really, like, really rededicated my life back to the Lord, it was stuff I was going through, if it would have stopped, then that would have stopped me from crying out. See, what people got to understand is, stop being emotional because somebody going through. The Lord is going to do that to cause them to cry. Hey. That's the see, you know what they're going through? It's bad and this, that, and other, but guess what? The Lord does it on purpose. He'll literally cause everybody around you to say no so you can only talk to him. Oh, I'm just going for the YouTubers, the, the, the wealth transfer community. You don't going to get two seconds of my time with this. When you get your increase, don't be handing out that money. The Lord already said that in certain people that they're going to be crying out because they don't have, but that's the only way they're going to be saved. 
So if when I was when, when I lost everything, if I if, if people kept telling me yes and kept giving me, then I would have never won. Correct. I would have just kept on. Come on now. Come on, I'm gonna get 50 from you, 100, 20. I would have never been able to what? Cry out. To stop getting in the way of people's crying. Pray for what? His will to be done. You got to see people that need prayer, right? Like by your head, Justin. I pray that the Lord's will be done in your life. And I want to pray. You're looking for me to go from Genesis to Revelation? Right? I'm praying for the Lord's will to be done in your life. Not my will, because I don't want to get caught up in your situation. Just maybe be experiencing something, going through something that's grieving me. I got to be obedient to the spirit. That, 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 that thing that's going on with him is going to cause to get closer with Christ. Now, come on now. He ran in the right? Well, and he did not what? Remove it. The thing is, the thorn caused him to keep crying to the wife. So stop asking the Lord to take thorns away because that's going to take your communication away. Hear me. It's just some things that you'll be burdened with and that's going to keep you in tune with the Holy Ghost the whole time. Because you're going to see, man, good. You see, you're going to say, you know, you know when people work out, Lord, gee, you know, you're in pain. Jesus, see, that's the one keep you going. Because you keep screaming his name. Jesus. It's the thorn. If you think the thorn, you think everything off. You ain't praying as much. It's the reason why the Lord to keep things that irritate us. It's not that he's trying to be mean. He's just trying to keep us close. You ever, you ever, uh, Byron, I think you can attest to this. When I was in the band, we wore boots. You know, on the field, the marching, the marching band, right? But you said, "Art." You know, remember that when the boots get a little worn? And I, I remember one time I had like metal that irritated like the bottom of my, like bottom of my foot. I kept, I'm trying to do a thicker sock, um, and it kept irritating me, right? But I just did a thicker sock, and I tried to beat the little metal thing down because I ain't have no money to get no more boots, right? But the thing, I knew when I stepped wrong, I would feel the pinch. But as long as I stepped right, everything was good. But the thing is, it kept me in what? In line. That's what the king do. See, you, you, see the, you see the power of the Lord because he's allowing you to operate with the thorn still there. So that's blowing your mind because most people wouldn't be able to operate with that thorn there. So that's, you ready to take communion? So the thing is, y'all, the Lord created us to always be what? Uh, in need of him, dependent of him. And that's what thorns do. Thorns keep you in dependence. Remember, Moses, he was a stutterer, right? There was always a dependence, right? It's a dependence. Lord, I need you. See, don't always be praying to the Lord to make things perfect. It's Lord, keep me dependent. Because the minute you all want to talk about you got it all together, I gotta go, I gotta go in. Because the vibe ain't got you. <laughs> the vibe ain't got you. Nose all up. You, you think you got it all together. That's a deadly place to be. And somebody tell you, I know Jesus. <laughs> no, Jesus. Huh? You only met him two weeks ago. Huh? <laughs> huh? I've, been, I've been a pastor for 59 years. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But you're 59. I've been a pastor for 59 years. I'm confused. But you was a contact one day old. That's the reasons. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Any more questions?
Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's been so time. I pray. I guess my question is uh, you know, people in the field, field, stuff like this. What do you do when you pray? Praying about something, you pray for something. Lord, show you something. She don't know exactly what it's showing. But she knows it's coming from the Lord. She yeah. Don't, she don't know what it's showing. So, so this is the question. So you're saying when you pray, but the Lord is showing you something, but but you don't understand what it is. I mean, the, the, the answer is simple. Guess what the answer is? You gotta keep on praying. <laughs> you gotta keep. See, let me tell you, the Lord has done that to me, right? He'll show me something in a, in a dream, right? This is what some of us do. We'd be so quick to hop up and say, well, this is what it means. And we didn't even go back to ask him what it means, right? And some things are not always meant for you to jump up and scream out. Some things are meant for you to meditate and chew on. Lord, what? So, Lord, you showed me this, but I don't understand this. So you got to keep asking them. You got to be just as persistent. Lord, Lord what does that mean? Because, see, one thing about the Lord when he showed you stuff in dreams, some dreams are seven, eight, nine, ten layer pole. So, yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's what the Lord's saying, but you're also saying something else. Something else. Something else. Something else. Something else. Something else. That's how you keep the enemy off guard, because he never makes it that simple. We have to be careful. So I had a dream, right, where I've seen people, right? And if I'm not careful, I'm out there. Well, no, what the Lord was showing me is he showed me that person because he knows I know what spirit they had. So that's letting me know what spirit is in that situation, not that person. So if I'm not careful, I'll be running talking about just it. Oh, it doesn't need to be just. But the Lord says you can just it as a marker to show me what's really going on. But if you're not patient, persistent, and don't have a prayer life, you'll mess around and go to explaining something, and that's the, the, the total opposite of what the Lord is trying to tell you about. So to answer your question, this is the thing, this is the thing, prophet, and this goes for everybody. Listen. I believe the body of Christ lacks a lot of impatience. We're, we're not patient. Well, we're we looking for the quick what? Things that the Lord will show you, and you don't really get understanding until you come deeper. That's easy. It's an interpretation required. Okay? He'll show you something, right? Now, it's not you ain't got something from it, right? He'll show you this. But he, uh -uh, it's something else to it. He needs you to go deeper. So now you have to be patient to make sure you get the revelation. And then when you get it, now, Lord, what you want me to do with this? Before you just go run out and, and take off folks. Go ahead and get the question. Well, I cried before, but mm -hmm. I don't feel like I don't feel like you have purpose. Okay. Unless somebody dies, that's only okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, come on, most men, that's how we are, right? I'm crying for. What's the point of crying? Right? Hear me. And how do people equate tears to emotions, right? But last time I checked tomorrow, I know you, you said the Lord speaks to you in, in dreams and visions, right? And my Bible says he, he, he speaks to his prophets through what? Dreams and visions, right? But I also know those that carry the prophetic anointing, the Lord will allow you to feel what he feels. He'll allow you, you may be giving a word to somebody and you can literally be overtaken in what they are going through, Right? So the question is, I, I, I know Mario, you know, Mario, he, he ain't no baby. Babies cry, right? 
I'm telling you like a grown man, I cry. Right? But the tears come from joy of what the Lord has done. Being overwhelmed of what he did for me and, and who he even sent me and, and all that, right? I listen, I'm one of them, I ain't gonna cry, please. <laughs> You know, I ain't going to see me sit here boo one every day. No. <laughs> no. I'm, but when I become a woman jug every once in a while, it's not real. Just me. Thank you, Jesus. But what I'm saying with the tears, right? Sometimes, I remember Jesus was praying so hard that blood came from what? The brow. Right? I'm telling you, man, you don't necessarily. Remember, Hannah was praying so much that they thought she was drunk. Well, that's what coming out of her mouth, but she was still praying. Man, you get in that place, man, and tears will just start falling, man. They weep. Oh, Marion, keep on living. You're going to cry. I'm not saying you don't cry, but you're going to cry more, more because you're just going to be thankful for what the Lord has done. You're going to cry when you get your, with your old lady, your roof. You're going to cry. You, you, you're going to cry because you're going to be like, Lord, you're so good and you sent, sent me somebody I didn't even deserve. I ain't still going to hurt. I'm telling you what I know. I, I, I got one that, that I'm undeserving of. That brings you to tears. Like, I'm like, oh, going, Lord, I, I don't deserve that. You knew the old me. It just, it's some things you can't control. Now, you know, some people, they cry to manipulate. Hey, Ashley, I need $20. Jay, give me a word from the Lord. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to have a face like Clint now. I have manipulation. That's the spirit of manipulation. I'll give you an example. Lady came to me at Target. You know, they do this. I ain't trying, I ain't trying. So I can, you know, people that come up to me, they can. But you in. I, I'm embarrassed to say this, so she gave me this whole speech about me, not, uh, diabetes, medicine, and stuff like that. And I'm short $14. You know what I mean? You better get wisdom when you go to mess with folks. I said, where the pharmacy at? Oh, make sure pharmacy on 105. I said, how far is that from here? I said, five miles. I said, well, uh, I'll go there and I'll get the 14 dollars. Well, I just, see, I'm with the person that I'm with and, and not that I, don't worry about it exactly. Was me a mean Christian? I was ready to drive five miles to make sure she got her medicine. I'm just not giving you the 14 dollars. But I'm giving you the 14 dollars. Y'all better use some wisdom. I want to see back in my head. Don't worry about it. Well, <laughs> well, we ain't gonna worry about it. <laughs> you looking for the break? I was just saying, stop being so quick to give people stuff. Just listen. Um, pray one, but it was season, right? You got to pray about everything, y'all. Then I saw somebody on the corner playing the violin. What y'all doing? Man? The same hustle. Listen, y'all, you're not a bad Christian if you tell somebody no when you when you uh, uh, discern the hustle. I ain't never heard of no Lakeshore Pharmacy on 105. So I knew that was, I knew that was a lie. I know the one. I said, where the pharmacy at? Because it was up quick. Man, so crazy, man. Don't so ever let nobody emotionally force you to give him something. You know what I'm saying? Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Have to um okay so I'll be this again. So like the Lord will tell me 
Uh, you'll give me a whole bunch of people who are praying for. You'll give me dreams, and you'll also tell me I like praying for a specific people that I see what we're going to Like, how do you, so like, I get overwhelmed because I don't want to just be like, Lord, I just pray for all my family and everybody who needs prayer. Like, I know, just like you said in the notes, you have to pray with the target. But then I get overwhelmed because let's say, like, I, I used to make lists of all the people, like, what made me scared for. But then, like, I would get overwhelmed because of, like, everybody has a situation that needs parent. And I don't want to just be like, well, Lord, just help them. Like, I want to actually. Go read it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I, I get overwhelmed and then I'll just, and then I end up not doing it at all because I feel like, if I'm not going to do it right, I don't want to do it at all. So, so this is a good question. So, now, you know, when you have that, 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 well, we all are, we're all supposed to intercede. We make that clear, right? But what he's saying is the, uh, the Lord may give her a group of people, um, persons to pray for, and then each person has their situation. And and you know, a lot of people, you know, you'll be smart, people be going through some things, right? And so one person may have a, a, a one list of stuff, another person may have five pages of stuff. Anyway, what she's asking is, how can you do that without getting overwhelmed? Right? Now, I, I know, I know it may sound crazy what I'm about to say, but it's a simple, simple answer, right? So I may say, Brother Mario, come on up here. What do you need prayer for? So Mario ought to tell me, I spent need prayer for you. He didn't go on down to this, right? I hear all of that, right? What you must do is, even though he's going down this list, you got to be obedient to what the Spirit of the Lord tells you to pray. So you're not going to be telling me to pray, man, I want to get this black motorcycle, you know, I'm just using that for example, right? I want it to be a, you know, a, a what else? I want it to go 200 miles now. You know, you, you may be praying to ask for that, right? And the Spirit of the Lord to have me saying, tell them that, uh, uh, no, I'm praying for a bicycle for you. I'm just using that for example, right? We can't get caught up in, even though we can't get caught up in the request, we got to get caught up what the Spirit of the Lord is saying about the request. So it's real easy to get overwhelmed when you got me making the list. But my Bible says we ought not know what to pray for, but the Spirit of the Lord does, right? So I'm saying I need this, 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 but the Spirit of the Lord tells me I need something else because that ain't was it. So because it's real easy to be like, oh man, she going through, whoop -de -whoop. he going through, he dealing with this, he dealing with a bad toe, he got cancer in his left ear, oh my God. But then the Lord may tell you to pray that they get saved. They may be unsaved. And that's that. And then when salvation comes, then other things will start. You see what I'm saying? So the answer is we must pray. So we won't get overwhelmed, right? I can sit here and, and just come. I'm praying for the sheep, Lord. Just. No. I got to pray what the Lord is telling me about the sheep individually and call that forth, and then there'll be a domino effect for everything else in line up. See what I'm saying? So what you got to do is, okay, Lord, this is what such and such is saying, but Lord, what are you saying? I should pray about this. And he may give you one or two things versus the 50 things they gave. So the answer still goes back to what? Being led by the Spirit. Whether it's praying for yourself, praying for your family, praying for your wife, praying for your husband, praying for your dog, praying for the sheep. It got to be led by the Spirit. See them. Okay, so so Denise said this too, Prophet, ask for revelation and wait when you say it. See, the Lord will show us things that we don't understand, right? But you ready for this? It's an honor when the Lord showed you something. So be patient with him and ask him, okay, Lord, what do you what do you mean? That's an honor when he reveals something to you, right? So the, the thing is, 
when the Lord reveals something to you, there's a there's a there's a measure of trust there. That he can show you something about somebody that you won't go back and try to dog them out or throw it in a. I mean, the, the Lord showed me stuff about the sheep, right? But it ain't my job to embarrass you. It ain't my job to make no video, not to share with nobody, right? Oh, Lord. See, I'm on YouTube, Lord. See, the Lord gave me a, a dream about Sister Williams. Sister Williams like hanging out in the dark. See, I can't do it. <laughs> I ain't doing it. Ain't talking about Sister Williams like hanging out in the dark. That's never, that was never meant for me to see anything. It's meant for me to intercede and call her out of the dark. <laughs> right? So it's an honor when the Lord speaks to us, right? So we gotta, you know, it's it trust there. So it's not, it's not, it's not you, you're not supposed to use it as a weapon. I don't know how Brother Byron is. Uh, uh, no. No, I'm praying and loving on Brother Byron. But I'm in my secret place by Brother Byron. Right? Me and her daughter, I know the things she goes through. I know, you know, all the stuff that that I would normally date, uh, like my parents would. Um, but I do always pray for her to be on fire and forward. Uh, so what I just prayed for, what, okay, so the last dream that the Lord gave me about my mom was, like, it was related to mom when she was, like, some blood issues. I'm like, it was a very specific dream, like, it showed me inside of the body of work. It spooked me out, so I started just interceding with her about that. So would that then be my target? Because, because he showed you specifically something, right? So now that's your target. Like, Lord, okay, if, that, if that's something where her mindset needs to shift, let's say it's dealing with uh, unhealthy eating or anything, right? Well, hold on, Lord. We call for, first of all, Lord, let your will be done in this situation. Lord, let your spirit go for her. Lord, change your mindset towards this. So to talk, Lord, take off with the, I'm just using an example, McDonald's and put it with the oranges and the apples and the grapes. Lord, line it up. Line it. But if he's showing you specific things, then he's giving you that target to go in on. You know? So yes, the Lord will do that. The Lord will give you stuff too about somebody, right? I'm, I'm talking to the prophets. The Lord will show something Tell a prophet something and be like, okay, if and, and have you go to the person, if you don't stop doing this, it's gonna happen. The Lord showed me to remember the Lord for words. If you don't cut off this behavior or stop, this will happen. And your job is done, right? Now you still you're praying, right? You're praying too. To make sure that you do it in God's timing, because some people are not ready to receive. I ain't trying to hear that. Ah, uh, you, you speaking a curse on me. Speaking a curse, you're trying to get. I'm gonna tell you, you keep eating McDonald's, you gonna become McDonald's. You gonna go crazy. Nah, you gonna hate me. <laughs> what? What you gonna hear? But, but if he's being specific like that, yes, he, he he's showing you what the the Lord wants to show you in dreams on what to cast down. Hear me. The Lord will show you what the enemy is planning towards you, your family, your kids, all that. So he'll have you go in and start casting all that down. There, see, there are people, and, and, and it's just hell. Hell or have witches, warlocks, and everything else Trying to speak curses over your kids, over your household, and all that. The Lord will show you that and have you, because you have the power to what? Cast it down. Send it back to the city. But you want to be led. Not in, you know, you don't want to get that like on, on the cool, right? Let's be real. Sometimes the Lord will show us something and show us the person that's actually doing it. And you got to be careful not to get angry at the person, but you take that anger on the spirit and do what the spirit tells you to. Don't get mad and ready to whoop, you know. I think I saw something on YouTube where the dude said, I think that was uh, um, 
Same boy name. Um, anyway, he, he said he was trying to swing at the spirit of rejection. Oh, yeah. And he said when he swung at the spirit of rejection, like I guess in the dream, he went like this and he couldn't even. So he realized you can't swing at no spirit, y'all. Swinging and punching and kicking, you're going to look silly. The only thing that can come up against that spirit is the word of God. And the only thing that can come up against that spirit is being led by the word of God and what comes out your mouth. See, I think a lot of us that have been with the Lord for a little while, we think we always know what to pray. No, we don't. You'll be, you, you might be like, well, I'm going to start praying for this. And then all of a sudden, all this other stuff starts coming out your mouth. Jesus' name, and then move on. So you got to be, you got to be a, 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 a willing and led vessel in every aspect of your life, especially being a Christian. Your prayer life, your fasting life. You got people listening to you too. You got people fasting right now, and they were not led to be uh, fast. You fasting right now, and you got some, you 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 got some, you, you're dealing with spiritual warfare right now that you caused. Man, why would you go into the hornet's nest and mess with it when you ain't equipped to mess with it? What you doing? You ain't no bear. Leave the, leave the honeybees alone. Only the bears are equipped to get up in there. You think the bears love the honey, right? And you notice when they attack, if that, that, that don't bother them, them bees be turning their behind up. They, they're going to hunt. This is what Christians do. We go messing with bee, uh, beehives and and, and, and hoarded nests and all that and unequipped. And you wonder why you're going through hell. I told you to mess with the, the lot. That's a whole nother teacher. You, you told me to do a, an absolute fast for 10 years. Stop. Stop. How are you fasting and you ain't got no prayer life? How are you fasting and you barely know the word? I'm confused. That's religious. So you got that religious demon got you fasting out of order. And now you got all that warfare going on at your house. Man. I don't always care nobody. I ain't trying to be mean, but you know. I'm telling y'all, man, look, fasting is supposed to be a uh, that's supposed to be part of your that's what they put. That's supposed to be part of your, your, your lifestyle, right? But even in your fasting, everything got to be led by the spirit of the word of the Lord. Who led Jesus in the wilderness? So if Jesus got to be obedient to the spirit, who are you? Um, the Lord told me to fast and that's going to be my McDonald's. He ain't telling you that. <laughs> he ain't telling you that. <laughs> You're just doing stuff. The Lord told me to fast to see if Bitcoin going to go to a million dollars. Oh. He ain't telling you that either. Stop that. Stop. Stop. So, so we just got to pray, y'all. We got to pray for ourselves. We got to pray for the body of Christ that everything we do is being led by the spirit of the Lord, not spirits. Because people are being led to fast by spirits. They being led to prophesy by spirits. They being led to pray, which is word curses, by spirits, but not by these people. Of the Lord. So it's 9 20. I ain't trying to. People got school tomorrow, I think. Let me see on if anybody got any questions on YouTube. Oh, no. I'm really. No, we'll shut it down. So I hope that bless y'all this evening. We did this is part one now. We got a lot to do with, with prayer board. Come on, Judah. You trying to take communion, brother? Huh? I mean, you know about you know the you know about what they say is y'all. You know, you know how people, you know, religion I have you thinking they're not gonna take communion once a month. But but the Bible say you, I mean, you can take it as often as long as you're doing it right now, though. I want you to get getting hungry and, and drinking and eating the cracker. Because them crackers say like sour bones, you do. <laughs> cracker taste like a styrofoam plate. 
Is that an order that I'm on the movie? All right. Something I heard today about tithe, y'all. I'm going to throw this in y'all lap. They say the church it, it wants to push everybody to pay tithes, which I agree, right? If I don't want you to I have a devour spirit, I don't want you to bring a curse on yourself, right? But it's hard to tithe when you don't even know how to budget. I mean, my budget, Pastor, well, this is the thing. I challenge everybody on the sound of my voice tonight, whether you do it tomorrow, do it this week, this is what I want you to do. If you want to see your finances increase, then you need to first look at your finances. Can you, okay, so Ashley has her own garden, right? So I'm going to call her the farm, because that's she is, right? That's one of her many attributes, right? The thing about being a farmer, right, you got to know how to till the soil, water, prune, cut, put the proper stuff to make sure insects, you got to know when to pull, when to plant, Right? In order to be an effective farmer, you still you got to watch your crops. Well, your finances are no different. The question is, where are you planning your finances? Are you watching your finances? Are you making sure that uh, uh, these insects and unnecessary things are not eating it or taking it away? Are you the insect? A lot of times, we're our worst enemy. We eat up our own. We're going to plant greens and then the next day you can eat half of raw. You ain't got a bit of raw. And then you're mad when you ain't got no harm. You can tell me. You're out there chowing on the greens. They ain't even ready. But that's what we do with our money. I know it's hard to admit because it's ugly. But I'm challenging y'all to do a budget and look where you spend your money. You, okay, it, it's out with rent, mortgage, okay, gas, right? You ready? Some of y'all go to the gas station, but you're getting Snickers, M&M's, Coca-Cola, Gatorade, right? And you know what's crazy? This is what I learned about the hustle, about the drinks at the, in the, in the uh, grocery store line. Them little 20-ounce drinks cost more than the two liters. They took some of three dollars. Get y'all two liter, but less than that. The thing is, though, but the two liter is hot. Yeah. <laughs> the two ounce good to go. But my point is, you just went to get gas, but you didn't add fifteen dollars worth of snacks. Hear me? You were supposed to go to Sam's to get the water. But you didn't got the slice of pizza, the hot dog. All I'm saying is create a budget so you can see for yourself where your money is going. Yeah. So if you know that I'm bringing in this amount, number one, it's going to help you properly tie now. It's going to help you properly sow and plant. Look, look, church, stop being so ignorant that the Lord is going to let you spend your money how you want to spend it and he's just supposed to keep supplying. It makes sense if I got a, a package of watermelon seeds. Hear me. If I got a, a I just paid five dollars for some watermelon seeds. Here, 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 this is what we do. Instead of planting those seeds, which can give me fifty thousand watermelons, we do this and eat the seeds. They taste like the watermelon pasta. They go. Then the thing you got to learn to plant. What is what's another word for planting? Invest, investing, investing, and so you're investing. But you first got to see how much you have available to invest. you look, you I'm telling you, y'all will be shocked when you do a budget. Trust me, man. I've been giving four hundred dollars to Chick Fil A each month. I see. It's not about you can't enjoy, but it kind of put things in perspective. 
Wow. I should have some Chick fil A. All this bread. <laughs> then you go Burger King, this, that, this, that. You'll be shocked. See, when you're doing it, it don't mean nothing, right? $5 here, $10 here, da da da. da. And then when it comes time to sow in the front of the ground, you ain't got nothing because you made it up. <laughs> you made it up. So I'm challenging everybody on YouTube, everybody that see this, create a budget, right? I ask the Lord to show you what you be spending your money on. You thought you'd be money. Lord ain't got to show you, you know. Just be real. You know, I'm a donut a lot. Red flint donuts, chili donuts, water burger. I'm gonna just be real. Upside, Krispy Kreme, all this Starbucks. So when you add all that up, and then you wonder why you don't have enough for this area, this area, you'll see that this area is being, I'm overspending. So I, I challenge everybody, if you do that, and then the next thing I want you to do is ask the Lord to help you budget your finances better and ask the Lord, where do you want me to put this money? And I guarantee you, you'll see increase. I think you gotta have a lot to get a lot. No, you don't. All you gotta do is have a seat. That's so good. You don't need all love it to get it. All you need is a seed. That seed gonna multiply. This can't multiply with the Pepsi and the Mountain Dew. The seed can't multiply with the honey bun. And Blueprint for vision. When he tells us to be fruitful and multiply, and multiply, and, and um, and that you have dominion over something financially, right? If and for me to have dominion over something financially, that means something got to multiply. So I can, so I can take them increase, right? But I can't never increase none if I keep eating the seed up. And a lot of us Christians, this is what we do. We'll pray and shout the house down in poverty. Uh oh. The Lord don't do it. The Lord don't do it. The Lord don't do it. And then the Lord don't do it. He don't do it. Do it. What you do? <laughs> <laughs> tell us right the, our job is what if the Lord is going to do it then he, he also gives us the what seed to do it but it means you have to plant it and not eat it up now I'm going to say him that it's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above you can all that you can ask people to imagine according to the power that's at work in you. Okay. And sometimes you must exceedingly and abundantly because you don't want it to be at work in you. Yeah. It's going to come through you in your obedience, in your faith, in your operation of the word. I ain't just talking at y'all. Remember, all our budgets can be tight, right? We can all spend our money what better, right? And it's not saying you can't enjoy that Chick fil A. I ain't saying that, but let's do it on the budget. You say you made whatever, $50,000 a month, right? You telling me that you can't budget like three or four grand to kind of do what you want to do with it? I'm talking about whether that's pampering yourself, go shopping or whatever. You better do it. You better do it. Because we're so quick to do everything for everybody else and neglect ourselves. So then that call is what? Abnormal. Spending it. So when you look out for yourself, you start doing crazy stuff. When I was making a bunch of money when I was younger, man, I was making about fifty, eighty thousand dollars a month. This is what I was doing. I was trying to make up for my childhood. Going to the mall. I'm buying. I had to throw back jersey. I'm buying to throw back hat, jacket, shoe, everything. Looking like a clown. 
spending all the money like a fool. Right? Because I'm trying to play what? Catch him. See, you got to make sure that even in your uh, journey to wealth, you still got to take care of you. Don't neglect you. I don't care if that's a haircut. I don't care if you got a haircut every week. I don't care if it's getting your nails done every week. It's for you. Because the minute you don't do that, then you don't appreciate the money. Because you don't appreciate yourself. Is it going to cause you to overspend? I ain't did that for myself in 100 years. And so you go out there and spend all your money. And now you pull up, bro. Rent doing everything else. They're taking the will. Come on. You know I ain't that. But I ain't, but I ain't did nothing. I'll be doing everything for everybody else. And then so now you're going to take the money you need. Am I right? Y'all know I know I'm right. Man, the time you want to treat yourself be the wrong time. This is the time you want to be saved. Now you want to go and I'm going to and crying and now you're fasting, Lord Jesus. I need you to supply. Lord Jesus. <laughs> now we all built together now. I need that like me. I need the money for something else. I don't care. I'm still behind. Yeah. yeah. See, this, this is the foolish stuff I've seen, right? This is the foolish stuff I've seen. So the bill like 400, right? All I had was 200, right? Well, it's going to get cut off anyways. Let me go make it to me. <laughs> Come on, now. I know I ain't going to make. I'm too hot down. So let me go on and spend this 200 or something. I ain't got the rest of it anyway. I'm going to spend this up. I'm spending on what I want to read. Come on now. That was poverty talk, you know? So what I need y'all to do is create a budget and make sure you put something for you. Even if you're, yeah, me and Denise are one, but still she needs to do stuff for her. I need to do stuff for her. That ain't, that ain't the price, right? Come on now. She may want to go get another game for the PS5. What are well, you doing it for and I can make one go get a purse. Come on. I don't think it's Louis. It's Louis bag. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, you got to treat yourself, right? Because I, I think, too, I think some of us are so conservative in that area, too. It, it, it prevents us from overspending. But, too, we kind of downgrade ourselves, if that makes sense, right? Like, treat yourself really, and I say this respectfully, if it's budgeted and the money's there, don't worry about the price. I'm not saying take, come on now, don't spend up your mortgage, but I'm just saying, but if it's but if it's there, don't be so concerned. Because now it's ruining the moment. Listen, we be quick to think about everybody else. So I'm gonna speak in my household. I think about Verizon before I think about me, because I don't want the phone to get cut off. I think about energy. Before I think about me, because I want my lights to get cut off. Well, where am I in the picture? You gotta put you in the picture. I don't care if it's a dollar, ten dollars, or if it's not, you got to put you in the budget. You got to. So, I mean, if you're making a lot of money, you know that this budget is for you to do whatever you want. Don't break the budget. Once you spend that amount, you wait till next month. I'm telling you, that's how people grow their money. I may be making a million dollars a day, but I budgeted $10,000 a month for me for entertainment, right? But once I hit that cap, I ain't getting another 10 to do what I want until next, even though I made another million dollars. Because you're, you're not letting the money control you. You're, it's a budget, so now you don't feel bad if you take the 10 grand and go get you a purse or two. You ain't tripping. You take the 10 grand and go get you 10 uh, uh, red bottoms. You're not tripping. It's in the budget. So you ain't gonna sit there and be mad at your wife. What you doing? It don't, it's in the budget. Oh, you right. It's all good. As long as you ain't going crazy. You know, it's 9999 now. You got to wait 28 more days. <laughs> but I'm telling you, that, that's all. If you do that, that's going to help you with your time. And it's going to expedite you to become a sower. Because you're going to realize all that wasted money can be going to grow money. Oh, you'll get it. You'll get it. 
you so many people willing to pay three, and hear me, I'm saying this straight, they'll pay $300 for some Jordans that won't bring anything back versus they're taking the same $300 to take a class to invest in themselves. Or they $300 to invest in their what? Business, which can buy them a, a whole foot locker full of Jordans. Don't. The thing about money, y'all, you got people with a bunch of money that are slaves to it because they're afraid of losing it. That's poverty. Money is a tool, man, and you got to be comfortable with it. You can't be uh, uh, the Grinch that stole Christmas. You can't be like the Grinch with the money. You can't be like Scrooge with the money, right? But you can't be a fool either. But it starts now with what you got. I don't care if you make $1,000 a month, you need to have a budget. I okay, you make $200 a month. You need to have a budget. You'll be surprised. I promise you. Y'all don't stick to that. I'm telling you, you'll see your tides increase. You'll see your sewing increase. And you'll see multiplication in your finances. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So take that, take that how you want. But I know in this ministry, we're going to start targeting like that financial mindset towards things. Because this is the thing, if you don't learn how to budget, how are you going to learn to spend the 90% that the Lord does give you? Uh-oh, you'll get it later. You're giving the 10, but you're mishandling the 90. So then you wonder why your finances have not increased because you haven't learned how to manage your 90. Some of y'all, some of y'all right now are going to go to Chick-fil-A before 10, if y'all leave me. Look, I'm not knocking you for getting some fast food. I'm not. I'm not. But if it's in the budget, but if it ain't, you need to go home. Get you some noodles. Break some chicken. You, you know, we'd be quick to go buy some fast food and got food at the crib. Well, it ain't all out. Well, it's all out then. It ain't all out. I'm swimming out. Mm -hmm. Wait, use the microwave and unpause. <laughs> I'm telling you that, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't season frozen chicken before and put it up. And everybody was there. You know what I mean? But now, son, I'm going to play and we might still be looking, be, be hungry later on. Come on, now. Sarah, that croak has got an eight piece of eight ninety nine. dollars <laughs> <laughs> he said the same question. He said it's in the budget. I'm saying it's in the budget. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, y'all. I mean, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, start, so start taking your finances seriously. Look at it. I was one of them clowns that I was making a bunch of money, but I was spending the money afraid to look at the bank account. Because that was stopping me from being a fool. See? You know, you have your own it, you just swipe in the corner. You know? All the way through. <laughs> oh, wow. I see you didn't do another. So you don't want to be afraid of your money. You know what I'm saying? You'll be, you'll be surprised. You know, but then too, I, I I don't want you looking at it every two seconds and let it be a, a, a God be. Oh my God, I can't, I can't get no salt. I can't get no pepper. <laughs> get that extra part of meat and sauce. That's 25 cents. I can't sit there. Take thousands with your budget. Hallelujah. Look, start prepping your meals. Take out the chicken early. Some of y'all should already took out the chicken last night. I don't feel me cooking. Okay. You better cook. <laughs> you got people wishing, right? You got people wishing they had frozen chicken. Am I lying? We ain't got nothing to eat. And you look at the what the see steak and wings? What's really going on? You ain't got that. What you really saying, I ain't got nothing that I want to eat. I want some chicken filet. <laughs> you don't know they lying because I do it. I do some chick fil A. I didn't want the chicken. I want chick fil A. But it's chicken, though, right? But I want the chick fil A chicken. 
uh, our cash app the dollar sign, the man from Conroe. Uh, if you want to contribute to the youth explosion, the dollar sign Y explosion. Uh, we are doing those fish plates. I'm telling you now, some people are complaining. I don't care. Talking about $25. Please, you go to the food truck, you're going to spend 30 And you're going to get half of what we get. So I don't want to hear on it. Listen, food prices are, are, are cost more. Catfish costs more. Straight up. Oh, now. People looking for a big plate for $10. Where they do that at? Nowhere. Nowhere. Don't do that nowhere. Food, everything has increased in price. So be a blessing. Be a blessing. So into the ministry. And, and also get some good food. Now, let's come up with greens. Now, I'm sorry. Green beans. Not greens. And dirty rice. Let's come up with some cake. And let's come up with a Sprite or a Coke. Okay? So, trust me, you will enjoy it and you will be full. Hallelujah. So, please release them. <laughs> Our king is at the Mantle Congo and uh, at the release food pantry and you can sell at info at theromanconcepts.com. And listen, uh, I'm still challenging everybody. We are, uh, uh, will acquire a $5 million building, but I'm challenging people to give. The Lord is stretching the church to give. Okay, so we got to, uh, uh, we, we we so quick to give uh, uh, the Foot Locker and Amazon, but when it comes to the Lord, we, we want to uh, be tight fisted. So we got to learn to to know when to release and when to when to hold. Okay, Lord Father, we buy you and before you. Thank you for those that have given. Thank you for those that desire to give. And thank you for those that desire to give more. Now, Lord, teach all of us how to budget our money. Teach all of us. Uh, uh, how to tie, teach all of us how to sow. Now, Lord, show us the ugly place, places of our finances, but Lord, give us your wisdom and your understanding, because according to your word, you want that exceedingly and abundantly for all of us. Lord, according to the word, you say, those that tie will open the window, the windows of heaven, that when uh, uh, a blessing uh, uh, pours out, that we won't have room enough to receive. But Lord, your word also says that you multiply the seed so, on. so Lord, we want to be in position to sow. Now, Lord, according to your word, there were 12 baskets left over after you fed uh, uh, the Jews, and there were seven baskets left over after you fed the Gentiles. Lord, there were 19 baskets of overflow after everybody was full. So, Lord, according to your will, I call forth the 19 baskets into our life, 19 baskets of peace and wisdom and, and, and healing and understanding and financially. But, Lord, you know uh, what each of us are capable of of operating in, like you said in the parable of the tithes. So, Lord, we love you. We honor you. Lord, cover the word, and that one word hits the ground. Lord, I call for that people that receive this word tonight, they operate in it, they're led uh, by your spirit, and they become that prayer warrior that you desire for all of us to be. Lord, we love you. We honor you. Jesus, by name we pray. Amen. All right. All right, something that we're doing to you, 